So in an ideal world, when we are making contact with our opponent and we're using our hand fight and our setups, all right, when we turn this guy's body, I want to be directly perpendicular to him, right, so I can shoot through his hips. But we have a partner across the mat that shakes our hands and also gives 100%. So it's not going to be as easy as turning his body and just becoming perpendicular. All right, maybe the first time, but now we're into the second step of the progression when our partner runs through on us, all right? And now I'm chasing that angle out, but he squares up on me. From here, I'm going to take a side step, all right? As soon as he circles in front of me, I'm going to take a side step, lower my level. And one thing that I like to do when I shoot my single guys is I like to shoot both my hands to the leg, all right? The reason why I do this is if I leave my hand up here, all right, there are certain things we can do. We have near arm, far leg, and some options. But in general, if we split our hands and shoot with our hands split, all right, it's a lot easier for my partner to start sprawling and defend. All right, I have a lot less power and a lot less strength when my hands are split. So when I pass Coach Perry by, as soon as he faces me, I take this step to the side, whichever leg I'm singling. I'm gonna slide my hand off of this inside tie, pull my elbow to my side, and now I shoot to this pivot position in my sweep single, all right, where I'm ready to, again, bring my trail leg up and drive up, okay? So after I make contact, I work up one step, pass this guy by. I'm really trying to get this angle as he squares up. All right, I step to that side, take that sweep, get ready to drive up immediately. On that rep, guys, I did a little fast, um, but a lot of this is timing. I'm anticipating the reaction that when I pass my opponent by, that they're going to circle and face up. So when I'm passing them by like this, I'm running that angle immediately, try to get this perpendicular. But I know that if he does want to wrestle and score on me, he's going to have to circle back in front. And from here, I take this split step, bring this elbow to my side, now I'm in this position to drive up. All right, I'm in this single leg position. Joey, uh, two, uh, two situations from my, per my perspective that I feel uh, on you is that when I square up on you, your level has already dropped so much. Uh, show that one more time and just kind of talk about your footwork just one more time because your level changed there. To me, I almost feel like I'm falling over top of you because you, you drop your level once I square up on you. Yeah. All these little things that I'm doing, um, guys and girls, is when I'm just like on this windshield wipe outside, uh, outside knee pound, I do these things on my own. When I do my own stance in motion, I level change and I move around, corkscrew circle, level change. And it might look a little awkward, all right, and a little forced, a little unrealistic, but I need to, a, a lot for me is about this leg conditioning so that I'm ready to fake, I'm ready to level change, all right? Because it's such a big way to create an angle to get to our shot. So like Coach Perry's saying, when I pass him by, I almost kind of chase him a little bit and then disappear on him where I'm taking this level change and I'm disengaging from the tie, all right? If I were to keep this, you know, I might be okay in the long run, but I don't have as much of an angle that I did on the last few. So when I pass them by, I'm ready to shoot that sweep. I beat him so much that I can just take an easy backside finish, score my takedown. 
Yeah, Joey, uh, you don't mind talking also, just because we covered it in some of the other videos. Uh, head position when you're finished. I notice your head is up. You know, you, you, I mean, I don't feel like I can square up on you. Talk about your position on your finish. Yep. So when I get to any single leg, guys, the idea is I need to lock out my opponent's hip. And the way I'm doing that is by a strong wrap with my shooting hand, all right? And right now, it's really important that I keep this hand above his knee. When this guy goes to do defense, he wants to slide my hand low, right? Start dragging me forward and or baseline D square up over my head. So I need this strong wrap where my shoulder is attached to his femur, my hand is up above his knee, and my head, the side of my head, guys, is jamming right into his stomach and rib cage. And my six pack, right? And his six pack. Okay. So if he sprawls, I can go backside, yeah. all right? And if not, I'm strong enough that I can just walk him right up to our feet, all right? And now start finishing from there. So again, when I get into this single, it's super strong. I usually shoot to two hands, but this shoulder is glued to his femur. My head is jamming into his hip, stomach, ribs, and six pack, all right? And I'm ready to either drive up to our feet and finish that way, or stay tight, hand above the knee, finish backside, solid for our takedown. So again, starting with our low hand fight through the progression. Nice and smooth, all right? Really using that level change to elicit a reaction, right, from our opponent. The first time it's lunge step, lunge step. Then I get this here, and that's the next reaction I need to get. In our own right, too, guys, when we're working on our own stance in motion, we can visualize these things. I just did the same exact thing, but without a partner. All into good position, and I'm ready to drive up, either up to my feet, or when a partner sprawls, run backside. Hey, Joey, before we cl uh, close out this uh, segment here, you, you talked a lot about uh, stance in motion, individual drills. Um, how often would you do that? When would you do that? And then how does that tie in again to the techniques that you've shown? Yeah. One thing I always have worked on throughout my career is fundamentals. Um, I'm a very positional wrestler. I like to keep good position. I think works really well for both setting up your offense and just being ready to defend on the defensive side. I may not be in perfect position, but it allows me to do that. So after workouts, when I'm tired, I need to focus on staying firm in the little things, right? Keeping my elbows in, keeping my butt low, hips in, all right? That when I do take these shots, I'm in good position. When I take this high crotch, these are little things that I can continually work on. We had a pandemic. I'm outside and I'm doing these things, maybe not hitting my knee, but still, the footwork is the same and you can always be working on these little things. So if you have a little mat, even on the carpet, Slight knee slides, slight knee pounds. These are things that I work on weekly, for sure. Uh, maybe not every single day, but they're always thrown in as part of a conditioning because I need to be able to do these things really well when I'm tired. All right, that's gonna be the difference from level to level and you know, really applying that to our wrestling.